This is Luke with Hamilton RV. I'll be doing a demo of the 259FL Zinger Light. Starting right here. Furnace vent is right here next to the door. Just remember that it's underneath the awning and it does blow hot air out when it's running. So watch your tables and chairs and that kind of thing here. Wheel bearings should be repacked every two years or 10,000 miles, whichever comes first. This here is your cable hookup and power for a TV if you want to run a TV outside. This is your tank flush valve. Now this is used on the black tank. So basically what will happen when you pull to the dump station, you'll hook your sewer hose up. Um, and I always recommend a clear fitting on your sewer hose. You're going to pull the valve and let the black tank empty. Once that tank is empty, you're going to take the hose of the dump station that's there. You normally use to rinse your sewer hose out. And you're going to hook it to this port and you're going to turn it on. With that on, you're going to let that run and take a clean water coming through your sewer hose. That's why you want a clear fitting. Um, once that's achieved, you'll shut the valve. You'll pull this hose off. And you'll pull the gray valve at the end to kind of rinse everything out. Um, storage compartment here. This is for the power tongue jack on the front. Stabilizing jack. Crank hand. Or no. Yeah, that's got that notch in it. This is going to be for your stabilizing jacks. The manual crank on it. So, let me, let me explain. Your stabilizing jack switch here. Sometimes one leg comes down and touches, then the other one will. You're not going to apply no pressure until they're evenly touching the ground. Once that happens, um, and they're not meant to level up to lift the camper right up, they're, they're uh, stabilizing. So when you back this in your campsite, you'll use your wheels to get your side-to-side -side level by laying blocking down on whatever side's low, back onto the blocking to get your side-to-side -side level, and then you use your tongue jack to get your front-to-back level. Once you're set there, then these go down at the end just to stabilize it. But again, um, they're not meant to lift the camper, just to stabilize. Now that crank handle I'll show you on the other side here. Opposite side of the switch. You're going to have that round rod right there with a roll pin in it. You're going to use that crank handle right on that and manually crank that jack up, up and down on both front and back stabilizing jacks. You should get on your roof three times a season to inspect anything that comes through the roof. you got what's called dicor around all the plumbing vents, anything that comes through the roof. Over time, the sun's going to bake that sealant and it gets hard, um, and it'll dry out. Once that happens, um, it'll crack eventually as you travel. Remember, your camper rocks and flexes as it's going down the road. So um, <clears throat> when it cracks open, just clean it with an all-purpose cleaner, let it dry good, and then reapply the dicor product right back over top of the old stuff. It'll self-level um, and fill the holes and voids in. You're also pre-wired for the Spherion backup camera. Um, you can buy the camera for that. Um, and basically, they're an observation camera. So them can be on as you travel down the road so you can see what's going on behind you as you travel, which is kind of nice. Um, also, uh, they have audio on them. So when you're backing in, somebody can talk to you through that camera without screaming at you and you know, screaming back and forth um, to tell you to come back farther or whatever. So definitely a nice, nice add-on you can do. Cable satellite inputs are here. And the storage compartment. This unit has a 30 amp, it's a 30 amp power supply. Um, you got roughly 25 feet of cord here, that's pretty standard. Um, I always recommend at least a 25 foot extension. Can't go wrong being able to plug them in. And I'd also recommend an RV surge protector that'll protect you from any kind of power surge. Um, and there's different models on that that you can get. Uh, if you're interested in them, just let me know and I can go over that um, a little bit more in depth with you. City Water Connection, if they offer water on site, I always recommend a water pressure regulator on there. It'll regulate that water pressure coming in your camper so you don't exceed the 50 pounds of pressure you're rated for. Also, your dump valves are down here. This is your black tank, gray tank. And then the sewer cap goes on. Um, outside shower. There's about four feet of shower hose here. Sprayer, hot and cold water. Hmm. Um, let me get shut up. Your fresh water tank is here. So if you're going to... Uh, we're a rustic camp somewhere, you'll fill this tank and run off your on-demand pump inside. Um, the drain for that tank is right down there. It's a quick drain, so that gate, white gate valve opens up. It'll drain that tank fairly quick. 
This here's your hot water heater. Pressure relief valve. This will relieve the pressure from the system before you pull your drain cap. This is the cap that goes on. Threads on right down here. And this just turns on here. One and one sixteenth socket fits that. Don't over tighten it. Remember that's just plastic. Um, gas and electric. You can turn them on and switches are all on the inside to run that. Um, the only thing you're really going to do out here is put the drain plug on and take it off. Or cap I guess. Drain cap. Um, if you leave water sitting in the tank too long, it'll get stagnant, stale, it'll get the smell. So I always recommend drain it when you're done camping. Just, you know, you don't need to travel with that extra weight down the road anyhow. Um, you do got a battery disconnect switch up here. Switch that switch, it'll actually kill the power from the battery to the camper so your camper don't drain all your stuff, your battery dead. You see, after about three days, your battery's going to die all by itself. You got stuff that's hardwired to the coach that it just drains, you know, the, the radio, the... Uh, carbon monoxide, LP detector, I mean all that stuff has a draw on the battery, so eventually it'll just drain your battery dead. That's why you want to disconnect. <clears throat> Regulator for propane is here. Switch from, it from tank to tank. These auto switch as well, and all that means is if both cylinders are open, it's going to draw from whatever tank it's pointing at first. Once this tank drains empty, it'll automatically start pulling gas from the other tank. The downfall to that is you don't know when you're running out of gas, so I always recommend close one tank and run one at a time. Power tongue jack, this cap will come off. You can manually crank this up, up and down. You got docking lights on the front, the down switch. Stabilizing jack switch for the front. And that's pretty much your camper outside. Let's head to the end. It does have this, if you got a small dog, maybe. I wouldn't trust that with anything big, though, because that, that'll get ripped off. Um, Fire extinguisher is right next to the door, to the left of the door actually, and if you go straight up from there, it's going to be your monitor panel and all your switches are right here in this corner. You push the button for battery, the lights will light up, same thing with the tanks, it'll register how full the tanks are, tank black, gray. Um, you got water pump switch, LP gas to your water heater, the electric side of your water heater, awning lights. Your ceiling lights, awning in and out, and then this is some blue lights underneath the auxiliary lights here. There's actually, hang on, let me get it down here. Some blue lights underneath there. Uh, we'll go through the living room first. Uh, light switch for the living room. All these nice windows. Spot for big TV. Radio in this. Power button here. It's Bluetooth capable. Speaker A and B is inside and outside. Um, you know, I mean, it's a radio otherwise. Let me see if I can remember there. Oh, no, it's going to be in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of a different layout. It's kind of cool. So your water heater is actually in that cap or right there there's a couple screws you take out and behind this bottom drawer is where you're going to find your uh, your water pump oh carbon monoxide lp detectors right below it so for winterizing that's where you'll have to get to winterize okay the stove sparker for the burners up top this is going to be for the oven you're going to put it to this flame push it in hold it and then you're going to spark this and it normally takes a good minute or so for the gas to get down there so then push it in Hold it for a second, spark it, it's going to take a few tries, and then once the pilot lights, you're going to hold this for 20, 30 seconds. I'm sorry, it's about 10 seconds you got to hold it. Um, and it should light, once it's lit, you can let off, and you should be good. If it goes out, then you got to redo everything. Um, fan, microwave. Behind me, we got... Well, this has a 12 volt fridge in it, so power button on this. You're looking at it here, it's lit up. When I push and hold that, it takes about five seconds, that'll shut off. I turn it back on, same thing. Push and hold it, boom, it comes on. Temperature down, temperature up. This is your freezer temp, and then if I push this button, it switches it to the refrigerator. And then this is going to be the night mode. When you go to night mode, all that does is um, just make the compressor not run as often so it doesn't kill your batteries quick. Fridge, nice and roomy. 
and these are 12 volts, so it runs off the battery. If you're going to do a lot of rustic camping, I would highly recommend a couple 6 volt batteries. It's going to last a lot longer. Um, you know, in the end, uh, you know, your batteries will last for, for a long time. Um, thermostat, temperature control, you know, cool, fan, off, heat, and then your fan switches here for auto, high, low for the uh, furnace or air conditioning. Um, toilet, foot pedal, push the pedal down a little bit, it puts water in the bowl, you push it down all the way, it dumps out. You do have a roof vent in here. These I would recommend a max air cover on. Max air cover is actually going to allow airflow in your camper even when you're not in your camper. So it's definitely something I like to recommend. Uh, you can't go wrong having airflow in your camper. Think of this like a house. Your house has... Um, roof vents in the attic of your house to vent the heat and moisture out. This does the same thing for your RV, so it's definitely something I would highly recommend. Um, and, and actually on this unit here, you have just the one vent it looks like. I would actually recommend a Max Air 2 on there, and I would probably do it smoke myself because everything on your roof is dark. Um, so one smoke vent cover, you're probably looking at about $130 installed. Um, it's definitely worth the money though. Air flowing can, I'm telling you. You can't go wrong being able to um, have air in here. So when you come in your camper, it's not hot. It's not as hot. It's not as stuffy out. You know, I mean, sink covers and stuff down there. Underneath the bed's got storage. Closets in the bedroom. A cute little camper. Yeah. So this is pre-wired for, this has got two boosters, this is an antenna booster for, let me see, this is your antenna booster there, and then this is going to be a Wi-Fi extender, I think, I can't really see that. Wi-Fi, and then power antenna, so the antenna's closest to us. So if, you, if you're going to put a TV in, you got to boost the reception of the antenna, that's this one, this is, or, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, that's your antenna, that's Wi-Fi, right? I don't know, I just looked again. One of these is Wi-Fi, one is antenna. It has to be on in order for you to get any over-the-air reception. Uh, and, and this is, it's not, doesn't have a Wi-Fi. It's pre-plumbed. you got to pay for service for the Wi-Fi stuff. This is the Stay Connected thing right here, this little tag. This kind of goes over it. It's pre-wired for it, so you got to, you know... Simple install, it says. Um, never put one in, so I'm not sure how simple it really is. Uh, <laughs> um, but it is definitely pre-wired, so you could you could add that if you wanted to. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple papers here. First things first, everybody gets a 10% off parts card. Present this to them in parts, they give you 10% off whatever you purchase. And that's for buying your RV with us. Thank you very much for that. Second paper, this is for you guys. Our phone number up top, 989-752-6262. If you have any questions on anything, please give us a call and you can ask for me if you want. My name's Luke here at Hamilton's. Uh, but this will work for, you know, this tells you your tire pressure, tire torque, how many valves, where everything's at, I mean, um, and what tanks drain into what on the back. I draw a diagram of how the water heater valve should look for summer setup, and then to winterize how they should look. Okay, and then two gallons of RV antifreeze for winterization. So the way these valves work, basically, for summer, the valve is pointing, the way the handle on the valve is pointing is the way the valve is open. So it's open to the water heater now, it lets the hot water out up top. For winterizing, it's just the opposite here. You see they go up and down. So now it closes off the water heater so nothing can come into the water heater itself and opens this bypass line so it has to go through that and makes it do a loop. By doing that, two gallons of RV antifreeze is all you need for winterization. And on your water pump, you got one valve down there that's on a, there's a hose where the valve is that doesn't hook to nothing. That's your winterizing hose. You'll stick that hose in a gallon of antifreeze, uh, flip the valve so it's pointing at that hose, and turn on your water pump after you flip these valves. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, again, that's for you guys. And the last paper we go over is like our virtual demo page. This pretty much explains cost of different things. Again, my name's up top. My name's Luke here at Hamilton RV. Our phone number, you know, 
Um, it's a price list basically of what it costs to have different things installed and prices fluctuate a lot so especially with covid going on right now everything's been up and down so if you're interested in something give me a call because odds are it's not that price it's either a lot of times it's a lot sometimes they go up i mean it just depends on what we can get parts for um, you don't have no slide covers the backup cameras I, i'm pretty sure at this point in time they're, they're less um for that same camera but again tomorrow we might get them in and they might be more so i mean i that's what i'm trying to say you got to call and i'll give you an accurate quote uh, vent covers like again this shows 139 but i'm pretty sure because you'll get a discount on the part right now i think installed you're looking at like i guess i'm not positive <laughs> maybe they are about that i don't know between 130 and 140 anyhow i don't think they're they're more than that by no means um Surge protection, that's hardware sets up there, um, hardware setup, uh, 30 amp setup. This is, you know, this is probably what I would go with on my own camper as a hardware setup, but plug and play is okay too. And there's different options there as far as what they do and, and cost wise. I mean, I would recommend at the very least the basic surge protector. The only dilemma with them is once they trip, they, you gotta, they're throwaway. So, you, you know, they're no good no more. You gotta buy another one. But anyhow, if you guys are interested in surge protection, just give me a call and I can explain the difference between them. Um, it's a little bit easier when I know what you're interested in. Um, lend a hands you can add. Uh, different. You can get tongue jack bike racks. Uh, we offer paint and fabric protection, which on anything vinyl, leather, fabric, or carpet on the inside gets treated. You get a five-year warranty from any kind of rips, tears, stains, or burns. And on the outside, you get a ceramic coating that gets applied. Um, it stops paint fade. It stops uh, sun damage from anything. Helps wash easier. You know, it doesn't let the black streak stick as easy. Your awning gets treatment as well, um, and is warranted for five years from any of that stuff. Um, so that's something that you can you can add. And normally that runs uh, about fifteen to twenty dollars a month more if you roll it into finance. Um, an extended service contract something I, I highly recommend to anybody buying a camper uh, because this is like a house that travels down the road you gotta remember everything's shaking wiggle and rattle and getting beat up traveling down the road so over time things do break um, our extended service contracts actually pretty good it goes out seven years um, the first year is done through your manufacturer warranty and then you get six additional years of coverage if you purchase the extended warranty they call it a seven-year warranty but technically as I just explained your first year is always done through the manufacturer once you're through your manufacturer warranty, then the extended service contract kicks in and it covers all the major mechanical parts of your camper from your furnace, fridge, air conditioning, water heater, water pump, all the LP system, water lines, fittings, tanks, you know, um, yeah, so it covers all the major mechanical parts of your camper. Uh, definitely something I'd recommend. Again, seven years is such a long time to be warrantied, you know, things are going to happen. I, it just, you know, there's no way around it. Things break. And especially in this day and age, they don't make, things aren't aren't built to last as long as they were back before, you know, I mean, so it's definitely, um, definitely worth the money, I think. Um, you know, generally rolled into your finance, you're talking anywhere from 30 to $35 a month extra in your payment. Seems like a lot, but when you got to start paying for refrigerators and stuff that are, you know, $2,800 <laughs> and then $155 an hour labor, it, that all adds up, you know, um, Air conditioning, they start out at about a thousand bucks, you know, at, and again at $155 an hour labor, the labor rate could potentially add up to a lot depending on what the problem is. Um, and that would all be covered under that warranty. Um, so, there's two things I do like about our extended warranty. One, it's prorated. So, in three years, you decide you don't want it, you can actually cash it out and get rid of it. Um, the other thing that's cool about it is it covers a mobile service. So no matter what, your first year again is done through the manufacturer warranty, which means you'll have to bring it in for the first year. After that, though, if you go decide you want to be on a seasonal site or, you know, you're going to travel the country, um, it's cool because it is covered nationwide in Canada. It's not something you just have to bring them here for. Um, so if something breaks on the road, your fridge quits working, whatever, you, you can, you know, you got a deductible you'd have to pay. It's like $200. Um, you know, and then your service guy, whoever, whoever's in the area where you're at, you know, you'll call the mobile guys in the area. 
they come out, they service your camper, you know, um, fix what's wrong with it. You're covered, your deductibles, you know, you pay your $200 deductible and then everybody's on their way and happy and you didn't lose a trip, you didn't, you know, lose everything and have to schedule a long appointment at the dealership because I know here everything's always backed up. It's like geek out for some reason. And then if we have to order parts, it takes forever. Well, them guys have a lot of that stuff on hand, so it's already, you know, they kind of have an idea what they're dealing with right away. So to me, it's worth it. Um, again, for 30 to $35 a month, um, you, you don't have to worry about having to pay for all the stuff out of pocket. Uh, again, my name is Luke here at Hamilton RV. If you guys have any questions or interest in any of the extra add-ons, give me a call back at 989-752-6262. Um, congratulations on your purchase, guys, and uh, have a wonderful day.